I know you're still limited, but how did it feel just to be like officially activated? Was that like a hurdle you were looking forward to getting getting over? Uh, I mean, no, not really. It's kind of the same stuff I've been working up to, you know, just doing indie drills and stuff. So it was the same thing, pretty much. It was cool to get around. Like, not, the only thing that was different was I got to be in the stretch line with everybody. So it wasn't, it wasn't too different. Do you still feel like you're on track to playing week one, like you guys have been talking? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, you know, be ready for it. But you know, at the end of the day, the coaches and myself, we're going to do the best thing, um, in my interest. So you know, it could. Could not. We ain't gonna, I'm not going to put any you know, certain timeline on this. Just uh, leave it up to God. And if my knee's feeling good that day, then I'll play. You posted um, comment mm-hmm. when they you know, posted that you were mm-hmm. activated. Is it, was there excitement there, I would think? And plus, getting that puff after your name out. You yeah. Know, um, yeah, I mean, it was exciting. But um, you know, I'm looking forward to bigger things than just practicing. So it was just one, uh, one extra step in the journey. Well, what were your thoughts about the Jets coming to agree with Dalvin Cook? Um, it's just adding another great guy to the room. Um, it's going to be good for competition, um, and it's going to bring the best out of everybody. So, you know, we're all going to work our hardest. We're all going to work together. Um, it's going to be fun. What's this entire journey been like for you, Brees, from from? Um, definitely bittersweet. Uh, really frustrating. Um, it's like a little bit of everything. You know, you have your good days, your bad days. The days you don't feel like doing stuff, the days you you want to do everything. So you know you have a, it's like you're an emotional train wreck th- throughout this whole process. But um, it's been fun. Um, it's made me a lot mentally and physically tougher for sure. Um, now I feel like if I could get past this, I can get past anything. So it's not it's nothing I can't handle. Are you still thinking about it, the the, the knee at all, or, or have you cleared that mental um, hurdle as well? I'd say I'll probably still think about it a little bit. Not so far of uh, – not so much of like, oh, am I going to hurt it again? I know my knee's fine, but just, uh, okay, if I, am I going to be able to make this cut again or do this? You know, you think about that type of stuff, and um, you see how it feels and stuff. So it's like once you cross that barrier of, okay, you do it, and it's like, okay, that's – I don't got to think about that anymore. I can do that now. So it's um, stuff like that. So for me, the next thing is going to be, okay, when I start doing team reps, how am I going to feel? My, is my knee going to be sore? Like little stuff like that, just learning how to manage that type of stuff. About having to kind of protect the player from the player, what has that process been like for you? Because I'm sure they, like you're eager to, to kind of go full board. That's what um, yes and no. Um, I'm the type of person like I don't care like how eager I am. If I'm not feeling good, I ain't gonna put myself through that to do it. So um, just as much as they want to protect me, I'm protecting myself. So it's been kind of a you know good happy medium, and it has been uh, the best for me. Was that something that you had to kind of get into your head that? You know, I'm going to protect myself because like, you, you're eager to get on there, but you have to be smart. Uh, I wouldn't say I had to get it in my head. That's been my pro- that's been in my mindset this whole process, just not pushing myself too hard and you know taking it one step at a time. So it's like, you know, I can push myself and I know where I can I know what limits and you know I discuss with my uh, trainers and stuff what limits I can push myself to and you know we we work out the kinks. If I get sore with something, we might take a break or take a little something off of the end of the workout, a little stuff like that. So you know, it's definitely uh, I think about it and you know it's kind of it happens with trial and error. Or concern in your mind that Dalvin's presence could impact your role in some way? Um, nah, just another. Like I said, it's another great guy we add into the room. Um, and like I said, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good competition. It's gonna be the best, bring the best out of everybody. So you know, when he comes in, you know, um, everybody's all of our reps might get lessened, or you know, um, and we're gonna have to work him in. So it's gonna make us, you know, do the most of what we can with our reps. So it's going to be fun. Um, he's going to come in. He's going to challenge us. We're going to challenge ourselves, and we're going to challenge him as well. So it's going to be fun. How about the overall talent level of this backfield now? Yeah, it's going to, like all of us can do everything. So it's going to be it's definitely going to be fun for sure. Um, now we are going to be having debates about who's the fastest. It's like little stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. Talk about the, uh, most, talk about the process being difficult. What was the most difficult part, uh, part about this process we had? Um, just getting like your leg strength back because uh, like it's like your quad strong enough, but it's like your patella tendon might be sore. So your your body might say, no, I don't want you doing this today or I don't want you lifting this heavy. But it's like you have to get past those mental barriers and kind of um, kind of just know that you can know that your knee's strong enough. And then when you start cutting and stuff and you feel like it may be sore or achy, just know that, OK, my knee's strong enough. It's just that my, your body's getting used to that type of stuff again. So you know, I still even go through it today. It's like some days my knee, some days my knee's a little more sore than others. So it's just like you know, you got to warm up, make sure you're warming up good, make sure you're getting a good prehab and rehab, and you know, just, just working out the kinks. How do you get past the mental, mental, mental roadblocks? 
Um, actually, I had uh, some talks with a few of my teammates and Nick Bodden, fullback, he's had a few ACL tears and he just told me like a lot of that stuff comes from you just thinking about it, just like all the tension in your head and your body. Like, so once you kind of just let go and just be like, okay, I'm fine. Like I can get through this, you know, the, it just kind of goes away. So for me, it's just been a, a whole thing of just knowing that I'm good, knowing that my leg's strong enough and that I can do whatever I want to do on the field. Us talking to you, and, and you had said at different points of your rookie career going to the NFL, you talked to other pros around mm-hmm. the NFL. I think Saquon was one of them. Mm-hmm. Did you happen to have any past relationship with, with Dalvin at all? Um, James, his little brother, I knew. Yeah, I've been knowing him since college. So um, just this aspect, and they're almost like the same person. So it was like, it ain't like you, it's not like talking to anybody like new, you know, he's a new guy, but they're essentially like a similar personality. So, you know, he's a real cool laid back dude, chill. Told me to hit him up whenever I need anything because he had the ACL injury too. How much time you to get a, get a pass from Aaron Rodgers and actually get it, get out there and, and uh, get some reps with him? Uh, it's cool. It's just football at the end of the day. So it was cool. It was fun. Um, me and him kind of joke around with each other a lot. He always calls me Bryce instead of Brees, just messing around. So we just have our little inside jokes and stuff. We mess around with each other a lot. What do you call him? <laughs> <laughs> Secret, man. <laughs> what were your thoughts when you heard about the Jets coming to a terms with Dalvin Cook? Uh, you know, I said what I said on Saturday about I think he's a great player, right? Um, obviously, I get a call from Coach, you know, and he doesn't have respect it. Um, but, I mean, after that, it's like, what can I really think about other than he's coming in and he's a part of our team now. So, um, I, like I said, bro, I got a lot of respect for bro. Like, so, it's one of the things, you know, we all going to come in and grind. So. When you say you get a call from Coach, do you, do you worry about your role with the team or today? He talked about how... You laid it out for everybody. You know, do you worry about that though? Uh, I don't worry about it at this point, right? But I can't worry about that, in all honesty, because then if I'm if I'm worrying about that, I'm out here on the field and I'm not getting better. And so, like, the main thing is about getting better. Yeah, that's really the only thing that matters. So, from from my perspective, I'm helping the team get better and getting better along the way. We talked to you uh, early, like last month, and you talked about how the James Robinson situation unfolded last year. Why? What makes you think you're in a different place than where you were a year ago, or just a few months ago? Yeah, um, to be honest, probably wouldn't. Uh, probably would have asked to not talk today if this happened last year. And that's where, like, me being a grown up now, like, growing up, and y'all tough, man. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't take it light. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are strong. New York media group. So um, I feel like I'm at a place where, you know, like we can speak on things like, and be honest. So um, I feel like that's a, that's a big difference. How do you feel about the talent of this running back room as a whole now that you add Dalvin Cook to it? Yeah, that's nuts. I can't believe I'm in a room like this. It's cool, though, because, you know, like however things play out, like you can't really control that. You know, I was told by, you know, Coach that, you know, like this doesn't change anything for me, but it might. You know, like we don't, don't nobody like got the perfect formula to this deal, so um, that's what I'm saying. That's why I say all I can do is grind, right? And so and let the chips fall where they may. So, um, but the room that we have right now, it's nice. Like I, I don't know. You can't even get this done on Madden. <laughs> it's crazy. How was it uh, getting Brees? Getting Brees? I know he's still limited, but yeah, yeah. Back, yeah. It's great, man. Having having my dog back out there. He deserves it. Um, he's a great player, and honestly, like, forget player. He's he deserves this moment, you know, to be back on the field. And he's grinded hard ever since, uh, you know, he got hurt. I remember, we had a talk when he we was in the locker room in Denver. He just, you know, I told my my PCL when I was in high school, like LCL, like it felt the world over for a minute. And it's not because your knee hurt; it's because you just want to play football, and you know that your season over. And so, um, you know, just looking back to that moment, it feels like it was just yesterday. And now he's already back, you know what I'm saying? So it's a testament to how hard he's worked and um, how Nicolini and, you know, the surgeons and all those guys, like, have, you know, got him back right ready to play. So um, he didn't really do too much today, but he had fun, I'm sure. So Obviously this competition or the addition of Coke is going to create more competition for reps. How are you approaching that opportunity? Yeah, um, honestly, I really feel like, and I've kind of been like this for a while now, but like, it's me versus me. At this point, like, I was already competing to try to be the best. 
So I don't think like my mindset changes on anything. Like, like don't get it twisted. Like, he's a great player, and I'm always giving his flowers. Like, you know, I'm from Florida too, so it's cool. But um, at the end of the day, like, and this is like these are things that like they would say too. Like the other guys in the room would say too. Like, you can't really worry about other stuff too much. You gotta just focus on you. Your first couple of years in the league, uh, I know Garrett kind of took off a little bit towards the end of last year, but I think the priority of most defenses was shut down the run and loading up boxes against you guys. Yeah. Are you looking forward to this coming year and potentially not having that be the case because of Aaron and, and some of the fear of going deep? Yeah. Pause. But def definitely, um, definitely excited for that. Like, not not to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me though? That's real. Uh, nah, but um, yeah, I'm excited to answer your question because, you know, obviously, just the way that multiple factors, whether it was, you know, play or play calling or just like things that we weren't getting done, right? You know, created a loaded box. I think I was like top two or three in the league and loaded boxes opportunities at one point in the league last year, and um, just to get out there and you know, like I had like a you know a couple of good plays last Saturday. And what it really is, I haven't seen that much space in a long time, like, just being honest. So it was cool to run against a six-man, five-man box, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, damn, this still, this still a thing? So <laughs> it, it was cool. It was cool. And shout out to Hackett. What does it mean to have him on this team? Can you repeat that? Sorry. Have you spoken to Dalvin, and what does it mean to have him on this team? I haven't spoke to him. Uh, exciting, though. Um, you know, we already have such a talented room with, you know, uh, you know, Brees practicing a little bit today, Mike, Bam, um, everybody. So... Uh, you know, it's awesome. The, the more talent you can have, the better. And, you know, we're excited and glad to have him. He's a heck of a player. So, excited to get him here. Have you looked around, Tyler, at all about the, the talent that's on this team yet and just kind of shaking your head at, at all the different levels you yeah. guys now have, guys? Yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, it, it is crazy. Um, you know, just so many weapons. I mean, obviously, um, the cool thing is now that we're so far into camp, like seeing all the pieces come together, seeing how – you know, we're using all the different talent that we do have. Everybody that does so many things really well, like McCall being as fast as McCall is and Allen being such a sure uh, receiver and uh, Corey, Delve, and Bree. So just so much talent. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to, to get into the regular season and see how it kind of all, in play, all unfolds. What kind of message is it sent to the locker room when the front office at this stage of training camp goes out and gets a player of his stature and is willing to pay a significant contract? Yeah, I think like we've been talking about the you know the whole off season and throughout camp, right? It's a day by day thing, but you know our goal is to win a Super Bowl this year and, and compete for a Super Bowl, and uh, you know obviously we're doing that from the top down, and there's still things we got to do every single day and to get better and make that a bit, uh, possible. But you know it's really nice that you know obviously we're all on the same page. Yeah, I think the big thing was the way we ran the ball. I think to come out there and run the ball, whatever it was, 30 times for 150 yards, uh, obviously it opened up a lot of the you know play action stuff for the tight end, scoring three touchdowns. So I'm happy. I'm happy about that. You know, two young guys getting their first one, which is really cool to see. And uh, I think that's the big thing, right? We want to come out there uh, as a unit and, and build chemistry. You know, offensive lines, tight ends, and and really run the ball. That's what you got to do to be successful in this league. So I think that was the the you know the big takeaway from that game. Yeah, I think it's really friendly to the tight end, obviously, in the pass game, but also in the run game. Uh, with the outside zone scheme and uh, the play action to go off of it, some of the tight end screens and all, those, and all those different things that you can do in this offense, it really gives you the ability to, you know, use things to help you in the run game when you are kind of at a disadvantage at times uh, or when you're in pass pro. And obviously, sometimes that can be a disadvantage against a really good pass rusher. The fact that we have all these things built in this offense, like tight end screens and nakeds and keepers and things that we do really well, it, you know, it can really help us as tight ends. Bill, from the last time we talked to you, just take us through how Will McDonald has improved. He obviously showed up in the game on Saturday with, with the sack and some pressures. Just kind of describe his level of improvement. Yeah. his. Uh, his approach to this has been um, far beyond his years. You know, he does not he does not conduct himself as a rookie, in my opinion, at all. Um, pushes himself every single day to grow. You know, it's really neat. Typically, guys like him that are freaky athletes, really good pass rushers, um, they're unwilling to be the the grimy run defender and the edge setter and all the things you got to do. Um, from that perspective, he is so willing to do it. Um, still has a lot of work to do in that area, but. 
getting better at it every day. Um, he's just pushing himself to grow in every area of the game. He's one of those guys that absolutely does not think he has all the answers to the test. Wants to be pushed, wants to be challenged, wants to be developed, um, asks lots of questions. Um, and because of all of that, I think he's got a chance to, to make a significant contribution year one. I really do. Yeah. Your so-called top four defensive front essentially street who, who is that top four well, i'm just saying i'm, saying, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm joking just saying you're you're in theory top four guys right you know, um, and you get the production you got on saturday night what does that tell you, from what you really got? promising um just another uh, illustration of what this organization has done as far as um not only developing a top four guys but just tremendous depth and uh and as we all know like that's going to be necessary to be the defense we want to be especially going to, going down the stretch um, I really believe, uh, from what I've seen out here, that this offense is going to be explosive. This offense is going to score a lot of points. And, uh, and when you're playing with leads, you need depth on your defensive line. I can tell you from personal experience, I don't want to get into my keloid that I have regarding that, but where you can't finish a game because you don't have the depth on your D-line. Um, we have that. And uh, for those guys to have that success um, in Carolina, I thought was really promising and showed some glimpses of what we can be. Like it just to follow on that, um, and the whole big picture of the team. As a coach, you've seen what you guys, the people you guys have brought in. Obviously, Galloway is not official or whatever; it's not official yet. And, um, that makes the running back room, like your defensive line room, almost it seems like. Uh, yes. And bringing Aaron in, all these guys, it's, it's there's a lot of significant parts have been brought in. Almost you know you want to use the word dream team or whatever, however you want to place it. Um, as a coach, even your even though your coach comes out of the ball, what what is that? What's your level of excitement when you see all these pieces brought in? Dallas being the most recent. Yeah, it, it, definitely exciting, you know, and, and the potential of what it could be. Um, but I think at the same time, like as we all know, especially in this ultimate team sport, you need cohesion, you need time on task, you need time together, you need everybody on the same page. Um, and Aaron is very good at what he does, but he's also he is he is. He's part of the coaching process, and he is teaching this offense at a PhD level, whether it be the signals he does, whether he, just his ability to get us into the perfect play every time. Um, that, for Aaron, is easy. To get everybody on the same page as that is a process, you know? So as much talent as we have and as exciting as it is, the potential of it, um, they still need to work, and they get, need to get on the same page, and I'm confident that they, that they will be. With uh, defensive coach, when, when you see what's out there, like, how do you prepare for that when, when you have Dalvin and Brees and Aaron and everybody else we're talking about? It's a problem. Yeah, like when um, typically when you, you study an offense, they have some strength, whether it's the passing game, running game. Um, not very often do the teams in the NFL have both. And, um, and I really believe offensively we're developing that, um, the ability to be explosive in the passing game, the ability to be explosive in the running game. A um, lot of different weapons, a lot of guys that you have to pay attention to. I mean, from a defensive perspective, it's an absolute nightmare, pain in the ass in a lot of ways. So it's going to be exciting to see those guys really work and grind and get on the same page out there. With, uh, with, with Will, um, how much of his development is going to be the, the run defense side of things? Because we talk a lot about his pass rushing. Like, where, where is he at in terms of that side of it? I, I just think from a physical standpoint, the, the pass rush stuff is going to come easier for him. Yeah. But at the same time, he has a lot to learn as far as how to rush. You know, a lot of what you're seeing is just God-given ability right now where he's just going out and, um, and doing his thing. Um, but he's a guy, like I've said before, he's so willing to learn, asking lots of questions, wants to be challenged and pushed, developed in all those ways. So, yeah, just because run defense is more about, like, pure technique, hand placement, leverage, mindset, um, that's going to be something that's going to take a little bit more time. But because of his willingness to really push himself in that area, I think, He's going to become an every down player sooner than later. Jeff, when you look at Aaron and the way he integrates himself and, and with everybody on both sides of the ball. Coaching and, players alike. Yeah, so you obviously you've noticed that. And how, how critical is that to the chemistry of a, of, a, of a place like this that has a lot of new bodies and talent in here? It's huge. You know, for, for a coach to say we need to be on the same page, for a coach to say we need to do all the extra stuff to get on the same page, to become the team we want to become is one thing and that's powerful, but it's way more powerful when that comes from a player and a player of his stature and a player that's had so much success in this league. So um, the push that we're getting internally from a player's perspective is, it's imperative to, to get where, where we need to get. The defense, you 
himself taken aback at all by the way he has interacted with guys who maybe somebody else might not, whether it be a third string cornerback or whatever. I'm just throwing guys out there. Has that taken you aback at all by the, with the way he's done this? I, I've never seen it. You know, in my whatever 20 plus years in this in this league, I've never seen a person that's so inclusive that um, that shares so much, that is constantly trying to just bring everybody along with him. Um, it's very unique. Solomon Thomas has made some plays that stood out in the game and, and in practice last week. I think what what have you seen from him, and what's the progression for him heading into year three in this defense? Yeah, he's a guy that just. He is all effort all day. He is captain of the strain team. He is um, he is exactly what a jet looks like inside and out. Um, and, and he embodies the style of defense that we want to talk about, being physical, um, playing with effort and finish. And then at the same time, the mental component of the game, he is really developing. This is his, whatever it is, the fourth or fifth year now in this front system, this attack front system. And you're starting to see the, the fruits of, the, of that. Like he just, he understands exactly how this front is going to get attacked. Um, and he knows all the tricks of the trade to, to beat those, those beaters that we, we see every single week. Um, he's a guy that I really felt last year toward the back half of the season was really coming on. It was one of our best interior defensive linemen. So to see him kind of start where, where he left off is exciting. With the defensive line rotation as well, you, you mentioned you know, playing with the lead, but part of having the lead is you guys will possess the ball more on offense and there'll be more rest for those guys. So in your rotational system, how do you think that can benefit you guys in games having that extra rest? Yeah, the, the best defense is the one that's sipping Gatorade and watching the offense operate, you know? So um, it'll, be, it'll be exciting. The guys will be that much more fresh. You're going to see that much better version of them, I think. And, uh, and really, we get to get into a different mindset when you're playing with the lead. You know, you get to jump off the ball. You get to really rush the passer where it's not a 50-50 down anymore. It is, it is pass. And, um, you know, I, I got to see it a little bit in 2016 on the back of the half of that season in Atlanta where um, our offense was the second best historically from a statistical standpoint. And we really saw two minute concepts in the third quarter, you know, where teams started to open it up and, and go no huddle and, and really try to push the ball down the field. Um, I think we have the potential to be that type of offense. And, uh, and when you get into that mode, then we really get to play two minute defense which is exciting, especially for, for the amount of pass rushes that we have on this defensive line. Sorry. From your side of the ball, with, with regard to Izzy, uh, um, what are you seeing out of him You know, and his speed, his burst, and stuff like that? Yeah, his speed is real. His explosiveness is real. You also see a guy that's still learning the game. You know, um, That takes time on task, in my opinion. You know, uh, Running backs in college football, there's a lot more space, whether it be the hashes, whether it be the, the spread systems that a lot of these, these guys come from where the holes are ginormous and, and the space that they have to deal with is, is uh, it's different than here. Whereas here you have to be very uh, exact in all that you do, how you set your blocks up, when you put your foot in the ground, how you, how you get vertical off certain blocks. And, and I think that's just a process and it's gonna take him a little bit of time with, um, that it takes all running backs to take, but at, at the same time, he's got the stuff you can't coach. I mean, he has home run speed to finish things and be a really explosive runner for us. Uh, Jeff, on the, on the Hard Knock show, you made some news with the speech that you gave uh, to your players uh, about do your job uh, and as far as that Belichick mantra. And you said do a little more. What can you do extra? First of all, what was your reaction to the, the uh, national media picking up on it? And also, is it dangerous to try to do more than your job in terms of putting yourself out of position or something like that? First of all, it had zero reference to <laughs> the Patriots. Uh, if anything, it's paying an homage to the Patriots. Do your job, set an edge of the defense. And then when the ball goes up the field, shed and finish on the ball. I'm, I'm responsible for the third. I have the third, the ball is thrown. The play is not over for me. Go finish on the ball. You know, there's, there's it's not compromising your job to do a little bit more. It's do your job, and when the ball goes elsewhere and your job is absolutely done, finish. Too often in this league, you see guys that are completely content just doing their jobs. I'm setting the edge, I'm sitting here, the, the runner cuts up the field, and they stop. And they come to the sideline, and it was an explosive run, and they said, I did my job, coach. Well, in my opinion, good defense is not played that way. 
we talk about all the time, the ball is oxygen to us and we will finish on the ball every single time. So that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about doing more than your job. I'm not talking about compromising your own job to do a little bit more. Do your job first. And that's huge. And you got 11 guys to do that. That's very powerful. But then when you have 11 guys that that's not enough, like you really, the, the mathematics of it, you're playing with 22 players when guys play in that way. <clears throat> and in my opinion, that's really hard defense to play against. It really is. But it's, it's more just a mindset that I will get to this ball no matter what. That's it. And what does, uh, what does Dalvin bring to this offense, and what, what do you think you can add to that running back room? Uh, I think the best part about the NFL is competition all the time. I think he's going to be a great addition to the room. It's going to make everybody better. He's a guy that has done a lot in his career, and we look forward to what he can bring to our team. What do you think of the room as a whole now? I mean, it was good to begin with, and now you're getting a four-time pro bowl. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, like I said, competition brings the best out of all of us. And uh, I think it's just another man that, uh, again, like I said, he's done so much in his career. Going against him for those three years, those six times, watching him uh, win a lot of games and beat us, I'm glad he's on our team now. When you have that many, I mean, obviously starting with Aaron and, and bringing you know, a lot of big time acquisitions during the, during the offseason on both sides of the ball, um, as a coach, what, what's your excitement level to see that, how it's all going to work together? No, that's a, that's a great, great question. There's only one football, so uh, you always want everybody to want the ball at all times. And I think that we have a lot of people that want the ball and deserve the ball. Uh, I look back, probably the best offense I've been a part of was that 2020 season. And what we did at Green Bay uh, with Matt and Getze and Aaron. And uh, then you look at all the players that, that really stood out from uh, Bobby to Devontae to Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Jamal Williams. Uh, there were so many different guys. Alan Lazard was part of that crew. I mean, it was uh, MVS. There were so many guys. So I think that whenever a defense has to cover the whole field, it's not just one guy. I think that makes you a better all-around offense, which gets you more plays, uh, more opportunities to give those guys the ball. So uh, it's just something that we want to take advantage of, and we want to be sure that everybody's uh, getting the proper due. How important is it to have a guy like Aaron who, you know, you're going to have guys who want the ball, like you said, but everybody's going to trust that he's going to go to the right player every play it's great I mean a guy that with uh, you know I mean he's done this for so long he's had so many different players he's thrown so many different touchdowns to so many different people we're going to add on to that hopefully this year quite a bit uh, but it's always great to have a trigger man that understands what we're trying to accomplish what the intentions of the plays are and to give him a lot of different targets and uh, I've always said the best friend of a quarterback is the run game it doesn't matter if you're Aaron Rodgers or anybody if you can run the football it's going to open up a lot down the field for him what do you remember about preparing for Brees last year? And then before he got hurt, he was having a pretty big game against you guys. Yeah, he, he's a very good football player. I mean, uh, it's going to be great to have him out there now and be able to see him and get to know him and watch what he can do. Uh, so the, the, it was obviously early to that season. And who knows what would have happened. And uh, we're going to be sure that we get to know him and see what he does well and, and then do that a bunch. <laughs> what have you learned about his mindset that he's continued to work to get to this point? I mean, he's done a great job. In all of his rehab, I give so much credit to the training staff, uh, just to this whole group. Obviously, he's an important piece um, to our, just our puzzle on offense and to see how he's been able to go through all that. And, and I've always thought that injuries really, really test a man because uh, you know, you're fine, you're doing great, and then all of a sudden something like this happens and there's a lot of internal things that you go through and you see him continually work, be great in the meetings, uh, learn the system, understand the system. He's right back there behind us during practice trying to gather any information he can so he can be put right in there. So it's just a testament to the man that he is. I look forward to getting him out there more. Dalvin has, has obviously been you know, the guy in Minnesota for, for you know, a number of years now. and He's used to being you know, he's kind of a, a focal point of that offense. You guys have so much talent in that room um, that I'm assuming there's going to be a pretty good rotation going. How do you how do you manage that yourself since you're going to be you know the one that's dealing with that and is that is that a conversation you have with Dalvin when he gets here or you had when you went during his visit? It's with everybody. I mean, there's only one football, and the key is for us all to work as one. And it's this game is not about one person. Everybody needs everyone. We're going to need every guy in that locker room. It's a long season, 17 games, uh, so everybody's going to have their opportunity to shine. Been around, obviously, well documented how tight you and Aaron are. 
the way he has integrated himself here uh, with everybody on both sides of the ball, whether they're starters or third string or whatnot, it's probably different in Green Bay because he knew most of those guys for a bunch of years. But um, it's been eye-opening to a lot of people who haven't been around him here. What's your impression of that and the way he has done that? And you know, in, in terms of the importance of the chemistry when, when the leader is, is being that guy. It's amazing. I mean, I think that there are all these things everybody talks about Aaron. He, he throws the football uh, to the people pretty well. Uh, he understands the game really well. Um, but there's a whole other dynamic for that position. And it's, in my opinion, why I think it's the hardest position in all sports. Because you have to understand everybody in that locker room, from defense to offense. I go back to the days when I was younger, watching guys like Joe Montana and how they handle the locker room. And I think that um, he understands how important that is. He did that at Green Bay. I thought he did an amazing job getting to know all the guys, bringing them along, letting them understand that they can lean on him when they need to. And I think to have a guy like that in the locker room and then to see him do it here um, with even more people that he has to get to know. I mean, it's, it's a thing of beauty because I think that that is arguably the most important part of that position, to get everybody to buy into him. Robert has talked about the offensive line being a work in progress. I'm just curious how you would evaluate where it's at right now and what's your level of confidence where it will be week one. One thing that I've learned, uh, especially these past five years, is as the season goes on, those five guys um, have to be very fluid and they have to be able to play in a lot of different positions. There's so many different things. So I think that one of our philosophies here with Keith is we want to try to put people in different spots because you never know exactly where you're going to be, um, how it's going to shape up. And at the same time, with the way our system works, a lot of things are, are carryover from right to left to guard to tackle a lot of the different techniques that we teach. Um, so they're still getting all the same work, um, but to be able to put them in all the different positions so that they're used to it, so that when we get during the season, if we do have to make a change, it doesn't catch anybody off guard. But right now, we want the best five to play, and we're going to continually evaluate that. What stands out to you about this tight end group? Tight ends are, are, are doing a really good job. I, th I think when you look at them, the cool thing about it is, is there's, there's a lot of guys in there, and they all can do a lot of stuff. In the past, uh, I've been part of teams and sometimes people have been specialized and maybe they're better at this or better at that. And the good thing about these guys, they all do everything really well. So you have the guys that can go down the field, they can catch, they can run routes, they can pass block, they can run block. So when you have that, it makes you uh, be able to do a little bit more with them. And the, fa the fact that we have a bunch of them is really cool too. Angela, has Sean Payton reached out to you yet? No. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that like a month ago? <laughs> I feel like everything. We, we talked to um, Alan Lazard, and I can't remember if you were asked this last time. He was saying how in, in meetings you make, uh, the guys make animal noises, and one of them was a kangaroo. <laughs> and I think I had no idea what a kangaroo sounded like, so I was wondering if you could just coach uh, me up. You know, we, 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 try to utilize, we try to utilize YouTube at times to be able to find that out. Uh, again, word association is always good for the guys and uh, we always want to enjoy ourselves in the meetings. Uh, they go a long time and you can only listen to one person for so long. So whenever you can make it interactive, uh, that makes it more enjoyable and they learn it better. Thank you, All right, thank you all.